I've been around and doing it But now it's my time to shine and start proving it I'm losing it, I'm moving it The city is where I'm made Bostonian flow, I kick it a back day Yeah, I got game, got in a fan way We the city of the champs, every sport we play It's been wetter than the harbor, yeah I'm flowing like the Charles I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike miles Yeah, it's Google signing on Welcome back everyone to another edition of Once a Week. I'm Billy Janlutis, and guys, we have a very special guest today. Someone who has helped me grow tremendously in my life and an extremely good friend of mine, Pastor Daniel Brown. Guys, Dan has been in South Carolina trained to become a pastor and bring his full-fledged license up here to help us in this. And to say from experience, Dan has been someone who came to my life and has helped me grow spiritually in such a way to connect with God in such a way and his messages just they hit you to the heart so luckily Dan's up here this week from South Carolina and I got a hold of him to give you guys a message so Dan thank you for being here and I really appreciate it yeah, yeah. thank you for having me man um it's uh it's been an honor just you know Getting to know you and uh, being a, a good friend, like you yeah. said, Thank you. it's it's real nice, man. It's likewise, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like truthfully, you know, like you've helped me out tremendously to, because when I started growing in my faith, and like you guys see in these videos, like I may mention it a little bit to try and like throw something out to you guys, but Dan was someone who really came into my life and helped me see all this. I don't want to say full circle because we always have to learn something new, but Dan has truly helped me understand a lot more. And to say that you you came in when I needed it is, mm. it's the truth right there. And I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm just I'm just glad I can help because you also helped me because during that time, like I was telling you before, mm -hmm. um, it felt like I needed something not to do because you're not a project, yeah. but you know something that I could pour out into somebody else to keep my fire lit and yeah. it really helped me get my fire lit and yeah. stay on track and keep moving forward. Yeah. So I thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I could help. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that, that brings up a good point right off the bat right there because, you know, to keep your fire lit, you know, when I try and help other people, it keeps my fire lit on the, the goal that I believe I've been given to pursue and the dream I'm trying to pursue to help people, like when I, every time I help someone, it sparks my fire a little bit more. Yeah, and it yeah. keeps me going to the next because someone else needs it. So to say that I had that impact on you to keep your fire going, because when I met you, you weren't, you didn't even know you were going to South Carolina. Exactly. That came exactly. out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> One day in the, in the parking lot at work, <laughs> I'm going to have to go to South Carolina. Like, huh? <laughs> well, if you need me, I'm there for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's and I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believer in discipleship mm. because um discipleship and just uh being converted to Christianity mm -hmm. or anything, you know, when you come to believe in God for the first time. Yeah. I believe that it's more than just me or anybody else telling you about God or or about um this walk in faith. Mm. It's about, you know, keeping up and and having those conversations and learning from each other because you, I've learned things from you that you know you've taught me, and mm -hmm. they're never you. You never know enough to where you can't stop learning. Exactly. So yeah. it's been a mutual thing. Yeah. And that's that's what disciple discipleship and brotherhood is all about. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So with having Dan today on the video, what's a message that you can give the viewers today? Um, one thing that has been a a, a steady trend in my life in this period in this season. Is um is are you ready to live in a comfortable life? Um, because a lot of things, um, I don't know about everybody else, but in this time of life, it feels like we're put in a lot of uncomfortable moments and in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. And um, you know, this is the a pivotal point, a pivotal moment, mm -hmm. a pivotal point, because um being uncomfortable is a place where we have to get used to and be comfortable in that place. I know that may not make sense, but it, <laughs> it, it, trust no, me. I get that, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just about learning to to um, to welcome the feeling of being uncomfortable, welcoming the pressure, welcoming being challenged, because if yeah. you never get put into pressure, you will never grow. 
Yeah. When you're just like, you know, how you go to the gym. Yeah. If you don't feel the resistance, that means you're not getting the muscle gain. Exactly. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And getting uncomfortable and you know, that's a that's a message that I think we all need to hear because that's the only way you grow. Exactly. And just like you said with the muscle example, like you grow in the gym when you can get uncomfortable, you can get under that weight and you your muscles grow, you get stronger. But in a life aspect, like life is gonna get uncomfortable. And I see more often than not people run from that uncomfortable aspect. Exactly. And they try to just stay as comfortable as possible. They'll stay in their house. They'll stay in their, their four walls. Yeah, yeah. Have their TV. That's all they need. But you're missing out on so much life has to offer when you can actually step out of your comfort zone exactly. to grow with it. And that comfort zone, can be, it's, it's devastating to people. It is. Yeah. It is, man. Yeah. Um, for example, I'll share uh, Billy already shared a little bit about my story, but, um, you know, I, I kind of grew up not really knowing that I was going to be called to, to be anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I was shy. I was uh, soft-spoken. Everybody would always have to tell me in conversation. They'd be like, could you speak up? I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I am. <laughs> and then, uh, um, you know, I was really, I was really laid back. I didn't really talk that much. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it seemed like out of nowhere I grew up and I started to gain a voice. Yeah. And, you know, I started to, you know, um, when people would ask me what I wanted to be, and I know we share this in common, yeah. that they'd be like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't, I'm like, I don't know. I just want to help people. Exactly. So right? from that, you know, I started to talk to people more. I found my voice. And, you know, I found out that I liked teaching people what I've been taught. Yeah. And that brings that discipleship back in the picture where it's like, whatever I've been taught, I want to pass it on so that they can do it and yeah. so on and so forth. And, you know, in particular, this time of my life, it has really been a, a place of where I had to get comfortable in being uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and it started with, you know, uh, the opportunity presented itself saying, like, you know, do you want to go out of state yeah. in a place where you've never lived before? I mean, because I've been to South Carolina a few times. I have family there, yeah. but I've never been in this particular area. Yeah. I've never lived there. I never even thought about living there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I fought it for a while. So don't don't let me lie to you guys and say that I was happy about going there at first because <laughs> I wasn't. Yeah. You know, I was really um, in the forefront of this thing where I felt really uncomfortable. You know, yeah. my, I was moving my family mm -hmm. there, you know, my wife and my baby at the time who was maybe like five or six months yeah. and it was really nerve-wracking at first you know I didn't have a lot of promised things there you know I didn't have a promised job I didn't even really have a promised place to live but exactly. everything kind of worked itself out all because I trusted the process yeah. and I put myself in an uncomfortable situation and I watch things work out for the good. Yeah, so. exactly. And to say you've grown exponentially since you left, because I, I only get to see you every once in a while now. Yeah. So when you ever, whenever you come back up here to see how much you've grown, it's, it's astounding to me. And you've been in that uncomfortable situation. So you've mm -hmm. had to grow with it. You've had to trust the process. You have to trust God in the process exactly. to see how you can grow in it. And I can remember, because I, I remember helping you with the, the move and whatnot, and... I can remember you telling me that you were going to move and then a week goes by, me and you were talking again at work and you're, you weren't sure how this was going to come about. You felt it in you that you're supposed to go to learn so you can help people because just like you said, we're both driven to do the same thing. We just want to help people. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I believe when you take a step back and you see when you're, you feel called to help someone. Whether you can look at it or not, I think God's using you to help someone else. Exactly. And, and whether people want to accept that or not, you know, so be it. But I think God's going to use you in someone's life, even if you know it or don't know it. So when you felt the call to go to South Carolina, and you were like, hey, this is going to happen, so on and so forth. You're called to help people. And you're moving, you're moving, you're like, all right, how are we going to do this? You guys had obstacles, like, right off the bat. Like that uncomfortable yeah. feeling, it hit you right off the bat. And it's not that you were afraid of it. You were just like, how are we going to do this? Just to, to be a third person watching Dan and his wife deal with this situation and try to help as much as we can. 
this, things just started to fall into place. When Dan would ask me, man, I don't, I don't know how we're going to transport, you know, this stuff down there. And then he'd get a call from the people down there. Hey, we got, we'll, we'll send you this. They, and like sometimes Dan didn't even have to ask them. They just call like, hey, we got this. I remember Dan looking for a job down there. He called me like, yeah, I'm still trying to find something. I get a text the next day. Hey, I got something. So when he was able to step into that uncomfortable feeling to be called to do what he wants, he feels he's called to do, what God's pursuing him to do. When we say trust the process, trust it because it's going to fall into place. If you can feel it in you that you're being called to do this, if you have a spiritual background, you don't have a spiritual background, but you feel it in you, you're meant to do something, there's, to me, there's a good chance that that's God telling you you're meant to do this. Move in that, no matter how uncomfortable it gets, and just watch the pieces fall into place. Because exactly. I've seen that in my own life, but to see Dan go through it and to see the level he's at now, like I said, it's astounding to see the growth factor. Exactly. Yeah. And like I said, um, we're never too, um, you know, at a point where we can't grow some more. Mm -hmm. So once yeah. you've reached a level where you're like, I made it, you know, I stepped out of my comfort zone uh, enough to be able to say, I did this thing. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but there's always going to be another level of uncomfortability yeah. that you're going to have to step into again. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept happening to us. And I kind of... I kind of embraced it after a while. At yeah. first, I'm not going to lie. It was it was tough. And I was like, man, I don't know if I can keep doing this, but there's always something in there, yeah. and which is the voice of God and the Holy Spirit yeah. and Jesus who gives me strength to keep moving forward because yeah. at the end of the day, he's the one that I do all of this for in the first place. Yeah. I just want to please him and know that I'm helping people because that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's exactly. awesome. And, you know, with you moving in, in all these areas and, and getting this growth factor, this is something I struggle with sometimes and because I, I focus so much on the task at hand. Yeah. I like the challenge just like you've grown to like the challenge as well because you know you're growing in it. You know you're getting stronger. You know you're pursuing something more. So when I'm tasked with a challenge, like... It doesn't hit me with nerves anymore. It hits me with questions. Like, mm -hmm. all right, how am I going to do this? And like, you know, I'll pray on it. I'll, I'll get my answer. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get my answer. I'm going to be able to do it. So there's no doubt in my mind. And, you know, I have the messed up there. No doubt, absolute faith. Because mm -hmm. there's no doubt in my mind that I, I can't do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I have so much faith in that. And I have so much faith who's leading me with that. But what's tough for me sometimes with the challenge is I focus on the moment, I focus on the challenge, that it's tough for me to see how far I've come. Yeah, yeah. It's very tough to see in that uncomfortable zone mm -hmm. where the growth comes in. And I know I mentioned this to you prior to turn the video on, me and my buddy, we were, you know, we grabbed dinner one night and this is the kid that's always, has been by my side for the past three and a half years pursuing his goals as I'm pursuing my goals. And we're... We've made tremendous progress, but until this dinner two weeks ago for the past three years, we didn't take a step back to see yeah. how far we've actually come with these. We're on the cusp of all these things just starting to come to fruition. And like, like I said earlier, I can't even say starting because the second this stuff, like the first step was taken, mm -hmm. that's when it started. And I'm three and a half years into this thing and to, to take a step back finally at that dinner and go, it's about to happen. Yeah, because yeah. you put the work in, because exactly. you stepped into the uncomfortable feeling, got out of your comfort zone and just said, like, we're running with it. Exactly. Do you ever have that where you're in the moment, yes. focusing on the moment, but you can't see the progress? Yeah, I do all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know what the great part about that is that since uh, us being Christians, mm -hmm. since we believe in a God who sits out of time mm -hmm. and that he created our life for us and that he gave us a purpose and a plan yeah. and everything has already been written for our life. The reason why we feel those moments is because we're trying to catch up to the time of our life that he's already written for us. Gotcha. So at the end of our book, it says, at the end of what he wrote for our book of yeah. our life, it says success already. So as we're climbing up to the success that he yeah. wrote for us, we get to have those moments and we look back like, oh wow, like, yeah. I'm, I'm getting to it, I'm yeah. here. You know, whatever your goal may be, whether it's you know reaching success, whether it's reaching a place where you feel like you can conquer the world or whatever, yeah. that's 
that's what it is. We're looking back at what God put in front of us and we're like, man, like I'm here. Yeah. Or I'm still reaching different points because it's almost like checkpoints yeah. where you get to a certain level and you're like, wow, I can check that off because I'm getting, I got there, I got to that milestone. Yeah. So I wonder what's next on the journey. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I, I agree that wholeheartedly because truthfully, it's that success that you know is at the end of the tunnel yeah. that ignites the faith. Yeah. It ignites that spark because, you know, if we look back to what's been in our past, this, yeah, you get fuel to go with it. Mm -hmm. But to me, if you can only, if you only focus on the past, that fuel, that's going to, that's going to burn out. But if you can focus on the fact that you already succeeded because God's got it for you. Exactly. He, he I believe wholeheartedly he placed that dream inside you that you're pursuing right now. To move forward on that, and if you can believe since that since that's even in there, there's a success at the end of that pursuit. That's why when you get out of your comfort zone to pursue that route, you're going to have success if you can keep that faith. But that success at the end of the tunnel is what ignites my faith. It's no exactly. longer what I've been through. I can exactly. use the tools of my past yeah. to get to my future, but it's the future that ignites me in the present to keep moving forward. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And... And another good thing about the whole entire thing uh, about this process yeah. is that uh, I believe that God is in the business of building character. So, for example, let's say you're like, you know, God, I really wish that, you know, I could have more patience. He's not going to just give you patience yeah. like yeah. that because <laughs> nothing ever comes that easy. And we all know that, like, yeah. if you want to buy something, you got to work for it. Yeah. So it's basically the same thing when it comes to character traits, yeah. like you want more patience. You have to be put in a moment of uncomfortability. There goes that yeah. word again. Yeah. yeah. To where you have to exercise patience on your own and you see the outcome of it. Yeah. And the reason why we thank God in these situations is because he's the one who gives us the strength yeah. to push through these moments. Exactly. So that's, that's really what happens. And then it comes full circle where you're like, wow, I see that I've changed and that my character is different now yeah. because I've been put in a place that I'm not necessarily comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny, like when you brought that message up where it's like, when you can pray and ask for it, and he's gonna give it to you. But if you like seeing your ask for patience, he's gonna give you an immediate challenge of that patience. Exactly. And Dan was the first one to tell me that yeah. like two years ago or something. <laughs> and at first I was like, huh. And then it really started to, the wheel started to turn in my head where it's like, if you ask for it, he will give it to you. Exactly. It, it says that right in the scripture. Yes. Whatever you ask for in prayer, he will give you. Exactly. But understand, like, it's gonna, it may come as a challenge at first. Like, yes. if you, if character traits, just like you just touched on, when you ask for that, get ready. Just like we've said in other messages where, you know, to shape the diamond, you need to cut the diamond. So when you pray to God for him to give you that success, to give you that character trait, whatever that means for you, understand that he's like, all right, and he's going to have to do something to start to cut that down and to make you into the person that you want to be and that he wants you to be as well. And that's the incredible aspect too, because until you didn't tell me that two years ago, that rearranged everything. Yeah, yeah. Because yes, I still pray. Yes, I still ask God for help or whatever it may be. But now it's like, all right, when I pray and I ask something, I believe wholeheartedly that he will give it to me, but I got to be ready. Exactly. And so that ready yeah. aspect is that challenge, that uncomfortable aspect that we keep touching on. So if you're ready for that and you really want what you just prayed and asked for, he's going to give it to you, but get ready and exactly. then run with it. Exactly. That's where I come at. Because it's, it's never in the way that we think. Yeah. You know, we, we tend to think that, you know, we're, we're asking for... Even if it's like something like a new car, mm. like, you know, God, I wish I could really have a new car, whatever car that you want. Yeah. You're like, I wish I want it really bad. And it's like, okay, yeah. but are you willing to work for it? Yeah. Like, do you have what it takes? Yeah. Uh, one Sunday I preached a message on, do you have what it takes? Because unless you really ask yourself that, yeah, you don't know if you have what it takes. Yeah. Then you begin to evaluate like, do I have the, the, the strength, the drive, the enthusiasm, the, uh, the will yeah. to push forward in this thing if I keep saying or thinking that I really want it? Yeah. You never know that you really want something until you're put in a situation to test or challenge you. And then you think like, 
hmm, do I really want this? Like, yeah. is all of this worth it? Yeah. You know? And I've been put in many situations like that. Yeah. Even just moving, you know, I had to ask myself, like, you know, I know that there is a, a calling on my life and I know that I have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Is it really worth me going through, you know, whether it may be not having a job or not knowing what's going to happen next or, you know, being put in these situations where I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Is it worth it? And at the end of the day, if your answer is yes, that means you got to just keep pushing forward. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we're built for this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're built for it. And we're continuing to build for this. Exactly. And, you know, when, when you were saying that, it really sparked in my head. And if you've been to one of my training seminars, I go over more of my story than I put into these videos because the people that are there get to know me. And I can remember where before I did the life coaching training, before I even, like, started these videos and whatnot, I can remember sitting there being truthfully broken from everything that happened. Yeah. All the pieces on the floor and everything. And as you say, you build it. I remember praying like I for God to like help me somehow to give me something to spark something in me that I can pursue to help people because that's all I, that's all I had left. I just wanted to help people. That was my dream, and I can specifically remember laying in bed, looking on um, a, a website. I typed in um, Tony Robbins, who I was trained by, just his name, mm -hmm. and that was like right after I said that prayer. And this is a cool thing right here is it wasn't Wikipedia that pops up. It wasn't Tony Robbins website that pops up that you'd think would be the first thing that popped up. It was a life coaching training. Oh, wow. And I clicked on that. And I was like, what's this all about? And I, I watched the video and to say that I had something in me that was reaching out that was like, you're going to do this. That was probably the first moments looking back now where God, where I could Feel God, didn't know it was him at the time because I've grown so much since then. And I felt that in me. I had tears in my eyes, like, I'm doing this and yeah. I'm gonna get it done. Mm -hmm. The next day I paid for that with money that like I had to go on a payment plan and everything, but I felt it in me that that was what I was supposed to do. And now to see where that's grown, where it's at seminars now exactly. where I can train people yeah. because I, I was broken. And then God's like, no, I got this. And he started to build the pieces back together, the character traits we just touched on and everything yeah, yeah. to be the person I want to be that he knows I can be the successful person at the end of this tunnel, I'm growing to become that person through all these experiences, through being broken, through the prayers, through asking and everything, through the faith, and it's happening. And that's all because I asked for it and I said, I'm gonna do it. Exactly. And when that came to me, it's like, there's no turn back now. Exactly, <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because to be honest with you, um, the way how God works is not the way how corporate America works. Yeah. See, it's it's actually the reverse way. Um, the only way that we can ever go up is we have to go down first. Mm -hmm. So that means yeah. that we have to be broken first. Yeah. Broken yeah. of all the things that we may have tried to build ourselves because we can't help ourselves at the end of the day. We can't do it. We're just, we're not perfect. We need somebody who is perfect to come and help us. Who, who's imperfect and who's we're always gonna mess up. Yeah. So another example is when you when you first take out a puzzle out of the box, whether it may be put together or not, you have to break the pieces apart, find the pieces, and allow them to be put together to make a full picture. Yeah. And that's exactly what God does with us. Mm. He puts us together and makes a full picture. That in the beginning, you have. If you have like a, a thousand piece puzzle, you're like, how the heck am I going to yeah. put this back together, you know? And that's what happens in our life. We're like, how am I going to put this this mess that it seems like I have in my life back together? Yeah. And then God says to us, all I need you to do is give me permission to do it. Mm. And I will be the one to put it back together for you. Yeah. And that's the best part of it. Exactly. Exactly. Give him permission. Trust them. Just walk it out. Exactly. Yeah. Walk out in that and have faith in that and just he's gonna put the pieces together the best way. 
Exactly. You know, if, if I put a thousand piece puzzle together, this thing would be hacked up. It'd be so <laughs> bad. <laughs> but, exactly. Yeah. Right? Things like not even connected, just shoved together. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about that. That's the image that came in my head. Right? Just, like us trying to put it together. Just like, all right. <laughs> we'll go. It doesn't fit. I'll get the glue. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though. When, when, God's, when you can give it to God and he steps into it, he's going to put it that thousand-piece puzzle that is you together the perfect way to make it into a masterpiece. Exactly. And that's the beauty of it. Exactly. If you can look at your life, your story, as a masterpiece, is that piece of art, just think about what it's going to be when it's done. Exactly. That's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I hate to be, uh, or, I mean, I don't hate it, but I, I don't mean to preach or anything, but the best part about this whole situation is that God gave us an example that all of this could be done. Mm-hmm. And that was by sending Jesus, the yeah. person who was perfect, but who also had to experience everything that we are experiencing now. Yeah. He had to become um, put in a broken place to where he was rejected and where people didn't want him, even still to this day. Yeah. And he never forced himself upon anybody. But the greatest part about it is that he showed us that he could get all these things done yeah. and still be you know, tempted, put in these areas where it looked like he wasn't going to come out. But yet he showed us what it looks like in the end when he puts all this trust in God and that's what we need to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that hundred percent. It's cool too, because you know, like you said, you didn't want to dive too deep into it, but <laughs> it's, it's so true that when you actually dive into the scriptures and whatnot, whether it's, it's your hobby or you really want to learn about this stuff or you just like after this video, if it's intrigued you to go look at this, it, it's really in there where yes. he went through everything we went through and like the character, I, for some reason, character traits keep sticking out of my head. But I, there's a scripture exactly where he said that he didn't want to do this, but he trusted God that he's exactly. supposed to. But that's a character trait right there where he, he wasn't sure if he could step into this uncomfortable feeling right here. Exactly. But he trusted that he was supposed to. Exactly. And when you believe it, he saved us all by doing that. Exactly. And for a bigger purpose. Yeah. yeah. And probably the most uncomfortable situation that anybody will ever have to face, yep. taking on something that he didn't deserve. And this is this comes full circle because yep. how many times do we have to go through things that we feel as if we didn't deserve it, yep. but we still have to go through it? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But no, like, I, Dan, I appreciate you being on. Just, and just because, like, this, this message of being comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. That's the message right there that mm-hmm. every single one of us needs to grasp, I think, but should grasp because you got to get uncomfortable if you ever want to go anywhere in life. Exactly. Right? And like yeah. whether that's just whatever goal you're pursuing, whatever dream is in you, whatever it is, if there's anything you take from this, if you don't even want to take what we just talked about with, with scripture aspect, you got to get uncomfortable in life to continue to grow, to continue to pursue to where you want to be. And maybe you don't believe it. Maybe, maybe that's the only thing you take out of this. But I believe God's going to use you one way or the other. He is using you one way or the other in your life. And whether you believe that or not, your life still has a purpose. And you are can you continue to pursue what you want to pursue. I think it's going to get used. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think at the end of the day, um, what we're trying to say here is take that chance. Yeah. Um, uh, step into the lights. Do if you wanna. If you want to, you know, do something crazy like you want to go skydiving. Do it. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Um, experience. Because yeah. experience is gonna shape that diamond, like we talked about. Exactly. Yeah. Go. Go talk to that person. Go talk to a bunch of random people. Tell yeah. them about who you are. Introduce yourself. Exactly. Just do something new. You know. Yeah. Feel uncomfortable, and then you'll come to find out that you'll like feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, we'll, we'll close out this message in a second, but that uh, it's ringing in my head, the uncomfortable feeling. Like when, when Dan says, go just do some, talk to all these people, just do whatever you want to do with, to have that experience in life to help you grow and become a better person, with whatever that means for you. So many people bring up to me, like, what do you mean you're a public speaker? What do you mean you motivational speak? Like, I can never do that. 
And there's a statistic out there that I always tell people where one of the biggest fears in the world is not death, it's public speaking. Exactly. And when people ask me, why do you like to do that? And I can remember being in, in grade school, being in high school, being in college, going through all these speaking aspects, and we just had to give a presentation, and like my heart would be pounding. I'd get that like that blush feeling. I could feel the, the sweat in my hands, and it's just, for some reason, that uncomfortable feeling, I enjoyed it, because it made me feel like I was alive. Exactly. And then to see where that grade school kid who had the sweaty palms would go with this speaking ability, mm -hmm. the speaking gift, to now being able to travel and give seminars to help people to speak with this, to have this YouTube channel that helps people. That sparked way back then. And then that uncomfortable feeling like, why be afraid of that? Let's run with that. Yeah. And now I'm doing it. And exactly. it's like, I enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. That's the best part. Yeah. And um, when you said that, two things came to mind. Um, uh, the, the first thing was is that my teacher told me that being nervous is a good thing because yeah. whenever you feel nervous and keyword nervous, not fear, because yeah. we have to conquer fear. Yeah. But feeling nervous, all it means is that you're ready and yeah. that you want to do a good job. And that's why it's okay to feel those nerves before you do anything exactly. like that is because you want to do well. Yes. And you're also ready. Yeah. And then the second thing was that um, just conquering fear, the fear aspect of doing anything that's uncomfortable. Because we, if we can conquer fear, then we can do almost anything in life that we put our mind to doing. Yeah, 100%. When you can take fear out of that and just start to move in your yeah. gifts, you're ready. Exactly. <laughs> Get exactly. ready. Yeah. But, Dan, I thank you so much for being on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Guys. Pastor Daniel Brown, he's getting trained right now in South Carolina, and he is pursuing to come back up here and start his own his own church that if you guys want to attend, reach out to me. Whenever he's back up here, I can give you the information. I can give you the address. Dan will be there right with you. And it's I think it's incredible to see how far Dan has come. And the you've been gone for, what, a year and a half? Almost two years now. Yeah, yeah it's been a little bit, man. And, yeah. and you look at that, it's like, oh, two years, you know, like... That seems like nothing, but to see Dan's growth in those two years down in South Carolina, to getting his license to come up back up here in Massachusetts, from my perspective, I can just see something's about to happen. <laughs> and I love that. But Pastor Daniel Brown, guys, keep your eyes open for him. And I'm going to be, Dan will be back on when he's back up here to give another great message. I love this message, and I hope you guys were able to take something out of it. Dan, any closing statements you want to give them? Um, uh, the only thing I could think of is uh, just what we opened up with. Yeah. Um, just try to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because these are the moments in our life. And um, I believe that now, I believe in seasons being uh, very important, just like we have seasons like uh, yeah. fall, spring, and summer. Yeah. Um, in this particular season, I believe that this is a, 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 a great time to learn and grow more than ever. Um, and even in the world, the world is in a place where we can learn and grow from each other. Yeah. But most importantly, um, be able to, to receive downloads from God yeah. and just branch that out, man. Yeah. And uh, welcome that uncomfortability because, like we said, in the fire and in the pressure is where you become the best you. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, take that and run with it. But I thank you for tuning in. Guys, hit that like button. Share this to someone who you feel this could impact. This impact, if anything we said, I know we said a lot. <laughs> if anything impacted you in some way, send it to someone else because there's a good chance this message could be for them as well. Run with that. Guys, hit that subscribe button because more videos are coming at you every single Sunday. Dan, I thank you All so right, much. Man. Thank you for being there. Have a good one, guys. I've been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving it. I'm losing it, I'm moving it. The city is where it may 